Uh, this is one of those moments when Lady Luck decides to make life harder. You know what? I'm pretty sure I can do a better job at making it hard. Hi, I'm not a chemist and today we're achieving peak not chemistry. At the end of the video I will be taste testing my product. Don't ever eat your experiments or drink them. You shouldn't inhale them either in most cases. Or touch them with your bare hands. Or any body part actually. Anyway, inside this package are dried green beans slash seeds of the coffee fruit, in particular of the Robusta variety. Typically you take these, roast them to your liking, grind them and turn them into black bitter productivity juice. Instead, today we're going to attempt every tycoon's favorite alchemical conversion from one cheap product into two expensive ones. Apparently I have to use two to open this package. Maybe I can turn into a not arts and crafts channel now. Story time! Every day thousands of people who inexplicably drink coffee for its taste search for a fix of decaf coffee. That is, bean juice of which the active brain stimulant ingredient, the caffeine, has been stripped off and sold for profit to pharmaceutical companies who put it into skincare products and pain relievers. And as any self-respecting industrial process, it has to increase profit margins by applying the simplest possible procedure and the cheapest possible materials. If a factory could run on dirt as a reagent and hire earthbenders to work it, it would. Well, for caffeine extraction, dirt won't cut it, but the next best thing after the cancerogenic benzene in terms of price and availability is ethyl acetate. And due to the complicated history of solvents being used for food grade plant extractions, two methods for solvent extractions have been developed, direct and indirect. Direct is as simple as it gets, you put your material into a solvent, you get a solution of your product, you distill the solvent away so you can reuse it, you sell your product, profit. The indirect method gets a little bit more involved. Let's begin. We are going for the direct solvent extraction method uh, using ethyl acetate. Uh, in, in coffee beans the caffeine is apparently bound in a complex with another constituent, uh, namely the chlorogenic acid. And we, we can uh, kind of make the caffeine available for extraction uh, by, you know, separating it from the complex and migrating it towards the surface of the bean. And to do this we need to increase the, the moisture levels of the beans. I didn't find any good source on how and why this works the way it does, but this is already a much better explanation than my, my other favorite one, which is that we steam the beans to open up their pores so that caffeine can escape. Uh, after the beans have had ample time to sweat it out in the spa, we can take them out and start the extraction while they are still hot and flustered. The industrial processes usually call for soaking the beans in large amounts of solvent for many hours, but you know, where's the fun in that? We have a Soxlet extractor, so we might as well use it. After putting a round bottom flask in a mantle, we can place the main chamber of the socket extractor on top and insert a cotton ball at the bottom. This will ensure that the extract gets filtered before flushing down to the round bottom flask via the siphon tube. Now we can start filling the extractor chamber with, with our steamed coffee beans, uh, which uh, normally, as I've said before, we might want to increase the surface area of the source material as much as possible before extracting them with the solvent, but uh, since this is is best achieved by grinding it into a powder and we want to keep the the beans we, we might not do uh, okay stop here uh, you have to keep the material under the level of the of the siphon tube here uh, damn it I didn't take into consideration just how much the beans would expand when when we steam them uh, this is one of those moments when Lady Luck decides to make life harder. Uh, but on the other hand I get to say, you know what? No, I'm taking the reins of my own life and I'm going to be the one who makes it hard. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can do a better job at making it hard. In particular, this is, you know, when I decided that instead of doing the same old socket extractor twice in a row, I'm going to attempt the, the, the indirect extraction methods with, with, with the other half of the beans. If you remember this is where we, we first do an extraction and then separate the caffeine from the extract and then reabsorb the extract back into the beans and that's like three times the work for presumably the same result. So you know why not do that to myself? Uh, after all this was only supposed to be a, a short extraction and recrystallization video. 
But, but let's continue with the initial intent of using the Soxless extractor to extract the caffeine uh, with ethyl acetate. Uh, after we have the, the beans inside the extractor chamber, we can, we can pour down the solvent and see that the siphon is uh, working properly. I then put a condenser on top which will cool down the, the solvent vapor uh, that uh, enters the chamber. And that makes the, the hot solvent precipitate and fill the chamber. Uh, this should allow it to, to do a hot extraction when in contact with the material. Once the solvent reaches the level of the siphon, it will flush back down into the flask that it originated from. And the cycle just continues with the fresh solvent vapor going up, filling the chamber with, with the beans, flushing caffeinated solvent down the toilet simulator 9000 into the round bottom flask where the extracted caffeine accumulates. Oh, and here Here's a cool thing. There are some white crystalline structures on the walls of the flask here and this is actually our caffeine. Uh, the reason it's there arises from the fact that caffeine is one of those substances that, at least in atmospheric pressures, turns from a solid directly into a gas, so-called sublimation. So once it gets heated to around 170 degrees centigrade in the flask, it sublimates, uh, it travels up and then it touches the cold sides of the flask where it immediately just turns back into a solid and forms uh, this you know nice looking crust on the flask wall and technically this is another way in which you could purify caffeine apart from recrystallization and now that we see that our extraction is doing something we can let it run for a few hours uh, trying to decaffeinate the beans just as much as possible <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen session, where I will be roasting the beans that we end up with. I'd like to mention in advance that I'm not a professional roaster, so I don't mean to offend with my technique. I will first be roasting the unprocessed coffee beans that we can use later as a control in a taste test. Anyway, here is a hob from hell. This implies that it's native to hell, but it actually just went there on vacation, and this is how it looked when it came back. You add a skillet to the hob, heat it around about 180 degrees centigrade and add a bunch of coffee beans to it. Now you have to keep stirring the beans all the time, non-stop, or you get beans with pure elemental carbon on one side and a fresh fruity other side. As you are mixing, keep slowly increasing the temperature towards 250 degrees centigrade. After a few minutes, some of them will start crackling like popcorn or dry firewood. On this particular run, it took them more than 12 minutes of stirring to get there. With time, the beans will occasionally suddenly release a lot of aroma and slightly change color away from green and towards darker shades of brown. You can see here, after 16 minutes, the beans start changing color slightly. After a few of these somewhat sudden changes, you will want to look for the shade that you personally like. I decided to go for a medium roast on these beans, but I think I would prefer them properly dark roasted next time. The process was also strangely slow this time, as it took the beans 40 minutes to get here. After you decide that your beans are roasted enough, let them cool down and breathe for a few hours, releasing any gases that were still trapped during the roasting process. I recommend waiting for at least a day or more before grinding your fresh roast, based on random internet searches. And now back to the Nota Lab. Uh, I let the, the extraction go for something like six hours, which, which I feel like is more than enough to extract the majority of the caffeine out, even though we are extracting uh, it from, from beans and not from like coffee grounds. But yeah, so after this, uh, we are left with this uh, solution with, uh, in ethyl acetate, which should contain all of our caffeine, basically. And it, ca it has a little bit of, of color from, from some flavor compounds from the beans, but it's, it's very little. It's not even worth mentioning, to be honest. Uh, but uh, So what we want now is to recrystallize this, but before we can recrystallize it, uh, we need to dry it. So my, my next step is to distill this solution until dry. And uh, we do this uh, very simply, we, we set up a, a quick distillation setup and we distill everything which is uh, liquid away from the flask into, into this beaker until we are left with, with just the, the crystals in the, in the flask. Uh, what's interesting about what we distill over is that it's, it's not really pure ethyl acetate. You can see that it starts uh, quite murky in the beaker and it starts at actually like 60 degrees I think. We get the first vapor and this is, uh, this is probably some essential oils from the coffee, uh, a very small amount of them, probably steam distilling over. 
and we, we can see that when the temperature rises to 78 degrees or so uh, ethyl acetate actually boils we start getting a clearer solution and um, the oils or whatever it is seem to be heavier than ethyl acetate and they settle to the bottom in, in a separate phase as you can see here there is this uh, another phase in the bottom of the beaker which which, <laughs> which looks kind of cool actually but more importantly in the flask uh, we are left with with this crust on the bottom of the flask which is actually our caffeine and which reminds me that we haven't yet touched actually the the second half of our beans which we still need to do something with and we decided or i decided that i'm going to do an indirect uh, solvent extraction and to do that we did already steam them with the rest of the beans but that step doesn't really matter anymore uh now what we want is to to steep the beans in hot water in order to extract everything water soluble in them including the caffeine which <laughs> Sadly, we'll extract the flavor compounds as well, but we are promised by industry that they can be reabsorbed by the beans later. So we just put the beans in a beaker of hot water and just let it stir at you know 90-95 degrees for you know many many hours. <laughs> uh, we basically just regress to making what amounts to a glorified cup of coffee bean tea in a beaker. I think I let mine steep for something like four hours while you know some sources claim that eight hours would extract the maximum amount of caffeine. And while, while our bean tea is brewing, uh, you know, let's go back to doing something fun. We now have this flask and the walls of this flask are lined with, with our caffeine, this white crust. Uh, we have a little bit of green stuff in there again from like the flavor compounds that got dissolved in the ethyl acetate. But this is a, a really miserably small amount, it doesn't amount to anything. So it's basically pure caffeine and once we recrystallize it, it will be even purer. So let's do that and we can weigh it and store it and have something pretty to look at as a side effect. So I decided to, to do re the recrystallization in, in hot ethanol. So I, I did I, I basically heat up a bit of ethanol uh, so that I can uh, then pour it into the flask and dissolve everything that's uh, in there on the walls of the flask. And I, I pour the, the solution that's in the flask now into, into a beaker. And I wash the flask a couple of times with, with more hot ethanol just to make sure that I get as much of the material out uh, as possible and um, we, we do end up with more ethanol than we need uh, so we can evaporate a little bit of it and I just eyeballed an amount that seems to be small enough so that as the solvent cooled down the recrystallization would occur and uh, you can see here it actually worked and here we have it crystals uh, to be fair the, the recrystallization happened a little bit too fast at the end so we didn't get the largest of crystals but I'm sure we'll improve for next time uh, I vacuum filtered the crystals and I washed them a few times with ice cold ethanol uh, to get them as uh, clean as possible until I got these quite decent off-white needle powder crystals uh, that we can now weigh to find our yield. And we have our first contestant, the direct solvent method crystals weighing at 495 milligrams providing us with a 35% yield. Not great, not terrible. With nothing to compare it to, let's store the caffeine in a vial and move on. Let me interrupt your chosen programming again so we can roast a few more beans. These are now the beans we used for the direct solvent extraction method. After the extraction they are quite soaked in ethyl acetate and you can clearly smell it on them. The sharp sweet smell of nail polish remover. Normally in an industrial setting the beans would be washed in water after being treated with ethyl acetate to remove the majority of the acetate. The beans can then be dried in a dryer and roasted. But considering how volatile ethyl acetate is, I thought that just by leaving them to dry naturally, the acetate would go away in a matter of hours, leaving us with ready to roast beans. And even if there was still any acetate left, it would surely evaporate away during roasting. And I think I was absolutely right in my assumption. The beans didn't smell of ethyl acetate when I started roasting them, and there was no fireball burning my eyebrows off, so I call this a success. And while we were chatting away, the beans got nice and roasted to the point of carbonization. Now, I'm no expert in this, but in my personal experience, this was a much better level of roast. Even though one side of the beans was slightly charred, the inside was just the perfect amount of roasted, extremely close to what I would buy on a regular basis. 
So probably due to the procedure of doing this in a skillet, the surface has to be more roasted than expected so that the inside is to your liking. With this conclusion, let's get back to business. Back in the coffee is tea timeline, we have been stirring the beans in hot water for a bit over 4 hours and can now assume we have dissolved the majority of the caffeine into this beautiful black brew. So let's try and move the caffeine out of the aqueous solution by washing it in a separate orifano with ethyl acetate. Theoretically caffeine is more soluble in ethyl acetate than in water, so we would be able to move it over to the acetate by you know shaking this mixture in the funnel. The two phase system we get consists of an aqueous phase at the bottom containing the, the, the coffee flavor compounds and a top ethyl acetate phase which hopefully has pulled the caffeine out. And since I was wasn't careful enough, we of course achieve emulsion almost immediately. Uh, normally this situation can be quite easily resolved by just pouring for example soda bicarbonate into the funnel, which would break the emulsion while also neutralizing any carboxylic acids in the solution. But in this uh, case we are going to attempt to reabsorb this coffee soup back into the beans and because of that I want to avoid altering its composition as best as I can. And that's why I just care carefully drained the aqueous phase from the bottom and the ethyl acetate from the top and repeated the process three times. Uh, in the last wash though, uh, I left a little bit of the aqueous phase in the funnel together with the emulsified layer and I added a bit of soda bicarbonate then. Uh, and after shaking you can see that the layers separate much more clearly and uh, very fast. I could now drain the rest of the bottom phase and discard it and this left me with a much purer top phase that you know I can now try and recrystallize caffeine from. The process of recrystallization itself is now identical to the one we used for the direct solvent extraction method. I distilled the ethyl acetate until dry, I heated the ethanol up, dissolved the caffeine crust from the flask and recrystallized it in a beaker by letting the ethanol slowly cool down. And even though we got some really beautiful needle-like caffeine crystals here, I think it's kind of obvious that they are less than they were last time. And indeed, after vacuum filtering and washing the new caffeine batch, we can weigh it to see that it's only 69 milligrams, which is nice. Uh, but it is an order of magnitude less than the material we got from the direct method. Well, we can't have that now, can we? In the end, there's two possibilities that I can fathom here. Either the rest of the caffeine is still in the beans or it is in the coffee water. Or, you know, like a combination thereof. If I had to put my money on where I expect most of the remaining caffeine to be, I would choose the aqueous solution. So I decided to test this by repeating all the steps uh, from extracting it from the water using ethyl acetate to distilling the solvent out to recrystallizing it and we pretty much got the same amount the second time around as well. This pretty much proves in my head that it's all still in the water but since caffeine is only slightly more soluble in ethyl acetate than in water, uh, the ethyl acetate can only pull so much out in a given volume so ideally we would need to tweak the ratio between water and ethyl acetate so that more caffeine is pulled out of the water, probably by increasing the amount of ethyl acetate. But also, as far as I know, the indirect method is usually reserved for when dichloromethane is, is the solvent of choice. This would uh, actually make sense since caffeine is more soluble in, in DCM than it is in ethyl acetate, which probably increases the yield from the liquid-liquid extraction. Okay, so arguably we've had quite a bit of success in this video so far, so I don't know, let's jinx it by mentioning it and let's move on. We are now going to attempt what I find the most questionable thing of all, to make the, the, the exhausted beans that we used in the indirect extraction method reabsorb the solids, the flavor compounds from, from the bean brew that we made earlier. All the information I found was basically just saying put the beans back into the now cold brew and wait for it to absorb stuff. So let's just do it I guess. I mean that's what I did. I just put it back in and I just let it steep there for like uh, overnight and I mean let the magic happen I guess. Okay, so from the preamble that I just did, uh, you can probably safely guess that it didn't do anything obvious. The next day the water was still dark 
back the beans had expanded so they actually did absorb water but I don't know what did they absorb with the water if they did anything at all and I don't know like at this point what could I do I didn't have any proper uh, ratios that I could follow or any proper procedure so I just assumed that it did the best it can and uh, at this point all I could do was dry the beans again and then roast them and see what happens <laughs> This is the last time I interrupt myself, I promise. We only have to roast this last batch of beans. The process itself is the same as last time, using the same hellish nightmare of a hob and the same temperature ranges. The roasting occurred way faster than in previous batches, which could have been a good thing if the beans hadn't shriveled until they looked like husks of their former selves. Sadly, I can't say I'm optimistic about the flavor characteristics of these particular beans, but hope dies last, so let's jump over to grinding all the batches before tasting them. To returning viewers of the channel, I present to you the spicy grinder, which is no longer spicy, and this time around is going to be used according to specification. Look at how much we're growing as people and learning together. And after a couple of uneventful minutes of grinding, we end up with three glasses of ground coffee. Leftmost is the direct method extracted one, the one with the socks extractor. Middle is unprocessed and rightmost is the sugar fest. The leftmost is the, the, also the darkest roast and smells the most like coffee to me. Uh, thankfully it didn't have any smell of carbon or anything else burnt like. It was a, actually a very nice chocolatey dark roast smell, but definitely having that additional pungent robusta aroma. Middle one is the lightest roast, the one we did first on the unprocessed beans. It smelled uh, super fruity and I definitely wish I had roasted it for longer. The one on the right had very little material to its name, but there was still enough for a couple of espresso shots, which is more than what we need. And the roast was somewhere in between the other two and it still held some aroma even though it looks very malnourished. The aroma itself was closer to that of the unprocessed beans, probably due to its weaker rolls relative to the socks that extracted one. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump to tasting what we've reaped. I've prepared three watered down espresso shots, each using the same amount of material and water, and decided to taste them in different orders to judge them relative to each other. And after jumping back and forth between the different coffees I, I had prepared, I can safely say that I'm pretty confident about what I tasted here. The indirect method one was the, the weakest in taste, but the taste that was there was very similar actually to the unprocessed coffee. It was fruity and you could definitely tell that the, the roast had a big effect on the, on the end product. But also I actually detected caffeine in it, which probably just means that as little as the coffee beans reabsorbed the flavor compounds, they probably did reabsorb uh, enough of the caffeine so that you can actually taste the bitterness of a coffee that has caffeine in it. And the middle one being the unprocessed one, the roast, was very fruity in taste, but it definitely had a lot of caffeine in it, as it gave me a stop every time I tried to, to drink more from it, it would just remind me that it's bitter and full of caffeine. The one that we extracted using the direct method actually was the subjectively the best tasting for me, uh, just because it had the darkest roast, which, which is usually how I prefer my coffee. I don't necessarily like it to be too fruity. With that being said, I absolutely can say that this is the coffee that had the least taste of caffeine in it. It had no bitterness, I could basically just take the shot and chug it and I, I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't taste any caffeine in it. So we definitely had success in removing caffeine from, from the coffee beans. I'm not entirely sure if we removed more or less than half of the caffeine considering that our crystal yield was 35%, but of course we had losses along the way. And as far as the indirect method is concerned, please tell me if you know a way to make the reabsorption work properly so that we don't end up with just husks of beans that have barely any taste. Alright, thank you for watching this nightmare nonsense of a video and I'll see you in the next one.